and grow YouTube show. Do you have any tips for planting up the plants? So you've got your layers of horticultural charcoal, uh, pebbles, soil, and then you've got whatever plants. So what's your strategy for planting up a terrarium? Um, well, you asked a little bit ago about how much soil to put mm -hmm. in. Usually, I would say if you're looking at the container in percentages, like mm -hmm. you cover about 20% of it at the bottom with soil. So um, it's just so hard. It depends on the size. But let's say you have a canning jar, like you were saying. So you might do half an inch to an inch of a drainage layer, whether that mm -hmm. be pebbles or horticultural charcoal or both, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on, on top of that, maybe two to three inches of soil. Mm -hmm. And then you can put your plants in that. So the ratio is less drainage layer, a little bit more soil so that the roots can spread out, you know, mm -hmm. for your plants. Um, and then the rest of the space is obviously for the, the leafy area <laughs> to grow. Okay. Yeah. So is there a minimum drainage layer amount that you recommend? Not really. It's, okay. I mean, and that can be, it serves a purpose, but it can also be decorative. I mean, you can do something really pretty down there. So sometimes if you're creating something, you want that to show more, you can do more. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it shouldn't be so thin that it's not really going to serve a purpose. The purpose is that if you overwater, let's say the water goes through and goes to that drainage layer down below, mm -hmm. because there's no hole in the bottom, like you would have in a house plant pot. Mm -hmm. So the water will sit down there away from the roots. And that way you're avoiding root rot, which, you know, is a big problem, whether it's a terrarium or not a terrarium for people. Okay. So and um, do you have certain amounts of plants? Like, do you like to always plant three plants together for the rule of three? Or do you like a certain percentage of the landscape to be covered in plants? Or it's really, you know, you, you can choose. Choose your own adventure. You can choose your own adventure. But personally, I like the rule of three because it's just, it's, it balances, it mm -hmm. looks nice, mm -hmm. but you also want to consider like, again, how big are these plants going to get and can you fit all that in there? So, mm -hmm. um, consider that before you stuff too much in there, because before you know it, you'll have <laughs> no air space at all. Totally. Totally. Okay. Yeah. I know you see these photos of these like old terrariums that were planted in the seventies that are just like filled to the brink yeah. with plants, <laughs> like, yeah. with like pothos, um, that are so cool, but okay. That's very interesting. So let's talk a little bit about watering. What are your best practices for watering terrariums? I promote, um, using distilled water. I mentioned that earlier and a lot of people kind of him and haw over that. Well, do I have to, and all this stuff, you don't have to, of course not, but it's better for your plants. Um, because in tap water, you know, there's all kinds of chemicals and things. That's why you get hard water stains. It's hard water. And that's more difficult for your plants to process. But keep in mind that in a terrarium, again, there's no drainage hole. So none of that is coming out. It's staying in there all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you're not using a, you can use spring water, you can use rain water. Um, for me, uh, the distilled water is cheap. I get a, a gallon of it for like $2. And I mean, unless you have 8 million terrariums like me, which I'm sure you don't, <laughs> um, you're not going to be using a lot. So it's not a big expense, you know, just go to the grocery store and, and get that and use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and the other aspect of watering, I guess I'll mention is that depending on the plants, like I'll use a spray bottle for moss, for example, mm -hmm. most of my terrariums um, that I sell are moss based. And so I use it just a spray bottle to, to keep the top portion moist. Mm -hmm. um, if you have rooted plants, you can still use a spray bottle, but every now and then, you know, pour some into the soil. So the, the those roots can really soak up the water. Okay. Yeah. I would imagine it's a fine line between 
making sure the roots get enough water, but also making sure not to overwater and then have a bunch of water sitting in that drainage layer. Yes, exactly. And that's yeah. again, where I like the spray bottle. Like if you set it to that um, stream, you know, the hard mm -hmm. stream and just kind of spray around the edges of the glass, it'll go down into the soil and soak down in there. But um, you're also cleaning at the same time, I might add. Right. But you're not going to, you know, risk overwatering that way. Mm -hmm. Most, you know, most likely you won't. And then what about closed terrariums? How often do you recommend opening it and giving, refreshing the water and maybe refreshing the air circulation? Yeah, so that's going to vary from container to container. For some reason, um, some containers hold it in. Like if you have a, I think it's called hermetically sealed container, mm -hmm. like a, with a really good seal on there. I mean, it can go years and you don't, you won't need to water. And then others with like some, some lid that's just, you know, loosely sitting on top. Um, I mean, you could need to water every few weeks. It just, it depends. But if you're seeing any kind of condensation, which is healthy, by the way, people get a little bit upset that they're seeing that fog on the glass, but it's okay, it's good. It means there's a water cycle going on. Mm -hmm. If you're seeing that, um, then you don't need to water. That there's some moisture in there and it's recycling throughout the glass jar. Um, okay. if it, but if it starts to get where you're not seeing that, or I mean, obviously if the plants look wilty, then yeah, it's time to water. Okay. Love that. And do you have any favorite plants that you like to recommend specifically for terrariums? Yes. <laughs> I love moss. Um, if that wasn't already obvious, moss is a great plant to start with and you can get it for free. You just go outside and see what you have in your backyard. Um, there's also people that sell moss. There's certain mosses that do a little bit better in terrariums. And I talk about that in the book, but um, yeah, that would be my favorite. And then um, besides that, small orchids work really well. There's even um, miniature orchids that a lot of people aren't aware that even exist. They're only an inch or two high and they, they get really pretty flowers. And usually those types need really high humidity so they can be good candidates for terrariums. Um, Peperomia ripple is, or they call it the radiator plant, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that one, if you have a bigger jar, it, it just really, really loves the terrarium environment. Mm -hmm. I My favorite terrarium actually that I have, um, I've had now for several years and it's just full of peperomia mm -hmm. and ripple and it loves it in there. It's really beautiful. So that's one that I like. Um, asparagus fern, The there's a few different types, but the one that kind of like is leafy, like not the foxtail looking ones, but the mm -hmm. other ones. Mm -hmm. um, those are really good for terrariums. Um, there's another plant called Biophytum sensitivum, which is uh, looks like a tiny um, palm tree. It's just the coolest plant. You can probably find that online. Um, and then let's see, jewel orchids are great. And mm -hmm creeping fig, which is another common one you can find anywhere. Um, that's a great one. For